high temperature structural materials in our country are quite often used for aero engine applications. And uh, so you understand that there are both uh, civil applications and military applications. However, usually in German universities, we focus strictly on civil applications. And I was involved in developing different new kinds of materials for many years now during my scientific career. Um, these materials are mostly metallic in nature. So they have a metallic matrix like nickel base or molybdenum base. I can further elaborate on this if you wish, but for the sake of simplicity, I, I keep it um, short and uh, simple, as I said. So these alloys have a metallic matrix, which gives, it, it gives them sufficient fracture toughness capabilities and also even ductility, you know, so you can forge the materials, you can bend them and so on and so forth. Uh, and then they need to be reinforced by other phases, second and tertiary phases, which are usually called precipitates or dispersates in our material science and engineering community. And these little tiny nanometer sized or hundreds of nanometer sized precipitates, they hinder the dislocations, which are the carrier of plastic deformation in these materials, in these metallic materials, they hinder them from moving. And therefore they increase the strength level. So the main overarching issue is to to develop um, novel materials, which um, should provide a higher elevated temperature strength so that they can be used in, um, in the turbine section of gas turbines, either flying, as I said in the beginning, aero engines or even stationary gas turbines. So that's basically what I'm working on. And basically also the course, which I gave at IIT Madras in the frame of this GIAN. So the Gian course was a lecture for students on various levels. So we had students from IIT Madras, but also from other colleges nearby. Um, actually, the course was uh, set up for two weeks, but then we had to, um, to modify it a little bit according to the fact that we had a how do you call it? Uh, I, I, I usually say hurricane, but uh, I know there's a different term in India for that. So actually there was a storm, a very heavy storm, which brought down electricity and water supply for a couple of days. So they, we had to modify the course, but in the end we finally succeeded and finished it successfully. As you know, and, and, and I think Dr. Sharma, Professor Sharma has made contact between us um, and he is a good friend of mine. So I should start uh, and explain a little bit more in detail the historical development of our relation between Dr. Sharma or the IIT Madras and myself. So actually I met Dr. Sharma first when he was a postdoc and spent some time, actually a couple of years in Germany. Back in these days, um, he was at a research institute in Dresden, which is in the former Eastern part of Germany. I was there as well at the beginning of his stay, but then I left for good. Uh, I joined an industry company, Plansee, who is making refractory metals and alloys. And as you may know, molybdenum is one of the refractory metals. And this is the focus of my current studies in the high temperature application business. So then uh, we lost track of each other for a couple of years, I would say. And um, later on, uh, because Dr. Jama came on a Humboldt fellowship initially to Germany, Alexander von Humboldt, as you know, is a famous scientist from Germany who worked in the 19th century. Um, and we have a foundation uh, named after him, which enables the uh, exchange between scientific personnel of many countries. So back these days, uh, Dr. Jama was there as a Humboldt fellow. And then uh, within this Humboldt program, you can have multiple mutual visits. So we extended that and he visited me in my first professoral uh, location, which was in Magdeburg, also in the eastern part of Germany. 
And there we got into contact as well, worked together on copper-based alloys, published a few papers together. And then again, he left back, uh, going back to India, we established a scientific, continuous scientific collaboration on metallic materials, most of them reinforced by second phases. I explained this earlier. And so it was a natural um, idea or choice that he asked me to come and give a Gian course at IIT Madras um, later on. This was then 2016. Uh, I visited later one more time uh, because we, uh, we, we uh, established a continuous collaboration and during the 2016 visit and also the later visit, I was able to work in the, or not work, but to collaborate with uh, a couple of scientists from the same department like Dr. Sharma is. And, and we established an ongoing collaboration on the high temperature metallic materials. Regarding the Lab facilities, I think IIT Madras has now assumed uh, in the Department of Material Science and Engineering at least, or maybe also in Mechanical Engineering, uh, uh, world level um, already. So you have got a really good e equipped labs with lots of um, state-of-the-art tools for characterization and uh, also for alloy making. So this is really... Uh, now, uh, I would say, world-class level. Ah, that was really um, an experience which I have never had in my life before, because usually when I was thinking uh, on campus living uh, or about campus living, say in the US or in Germany or in France, all over Europe, you wouldn't see a place, a place which is uh, comparable to IIT Madras. This is like, I mean, I mean it positively. It's like living in a jungle, right? <laughs> with, all the, with all the animals around and, and everything so peaceful, except for this thunderstorm, which struck us at that time and which kept us in some, or put us in some trouble, you know, even, email system broke down and, and, and the mobile phone system. I luckily enough had still a mobile connection because I was, I had a contract with a different company, but the majority of my colleagues around me didn't have email and, and nothing, um, no connection to the outside, I would say for several days, which was again, <laughs> a memorable experience. I would say India is a country where you can travel multiple times because there's so so much to see. And I would, I, I would, for example, like to travel to Delhi and the surroundings, the, you know, the big palaces and everything. I haven't seen them at all. Um, but, you know, business comes first and uh, pleasure comes second. I would say this was a very uh, straight and simple approach because I received some emails and, and I had to answer the emails and they did all the administration for me, you know, to, to, to fill out forms in the back, I think. Yeah. So I was, I, I only had to come once into the international office for showing up basically and signing some letters, but, but all the paperwork in advance, uh, I wasn't, I, I didn't have any trouble. So this worked extremely well, smoothly, and very much in time. So like in Germany, I would say. Yeah. That, that's really hard for me to, to, to recommend something specifically, because I think you are doing already a great job. I think the idea to send out people, to send out talents yeah, in their young age to other countries, most Prominently the US, of course, Canada maybe, and then probably Germany and UK are next to it, is the right way to increase the level of visibility, of international visibility in India or worldwide for, in, for Indian IITs. Um, I'm, I'm hesitating to comment on the uh, setup of Indian Institute of Technologies in general, because I've learned now in, that in the past there were only a few of them. I'm not, not sure about the exact number, but the initial number were, was definitely below 10, if I remember correctly. And all of them had such a partnership relation with another external country like Madras and Germany. 
And I think this may be for the other IITs, which have been now invented, a good way to improve their visibility because the original, I think seven or eight of them are already in internationally very visible, but now you have over well over 20 IITs and I don't even overlook all the numbers yeah, and, and where they are. Yeah? So uh, for Madras, I'm, I'm sure that you are already playing a very high uh, or in a very high league, not so much for the other IITs. So they have to be lifted up somehow. And this actually would be a good comment on the general IIT system. Yeah? Um, and, and of course, what I also can uh, recommend is that also the Indian colleagues um, who are already there could probably more frequently travel to other countries to strengthen collaborations. I mean, this is now all very t difficult because of the Corona pandemic. And as you know, uh, many people in Europe are afraid of the Indian version of the, of the coronavirus. So maybe travel would be even more restricted now, uh, but of course, let's cross fingers. We hope that it will turn around in, in not so long time so that we can continue with this mutual exchange of personnel. This is, I think, the key for success, basically for all institutions who do research in the world, I would say. Yeah? So there's nothing really specific for IIT Madras because I think you are doing already a very good job. these Gian courses, for example, I think maybe in this way or in a similar way um, are a perfect measure or tool to first strengthen collaboration with external partners from other countries in the world and second to increase the, in, the visibility internationally. I really enjoyed the stay during this Gian course even I mean, it's not a matter of money, you know, uh, because scientists uh, are not scientists because they want to earn a lot of money. If I want to do this, then I have to become a manager in industry. So I would say the Gian course is a perfect example for really bringing people from other countries into the IITs and, and strengthen their international visibility, as I said. So that's really should, should not be stopped. It should be continued.